Hi, everybody, and welcome back to what really, truly this time should be the last video in this Firebase Semi Live series. So we've been making a whole lot of progress. And as you recall, in the last video, we had just finished communicating with our billing service and properly querying whether we had, you know, a billing account enabled for a project. And then I kind of cut the video short because I was like, this is taking a long time and I don't want to have people watch like a 50 minute video or what have you. So we're going to continue where we left off from the last video. Sorry for the kind of awkward transition, but we have just finished talking to our billing service and now we're going to implement the final part of our cloud function, which is going to be to disable billing again, kind of, you know, ripping the cord out of the wall in our project um, to make sure that we don't incur any more billing costs. So uh, let's pick up where we left off. It looks like I am able to get at my billing information. I can see that billing is currently enabled. And basically what I found is that if I want to turn off billing, all I essentially need to do is set my billing account name to uh, null. So let's go ahead and put that into our code as well. So I'm going to create one more function here called disable billing for real. And I will set my credentials for billing. And I'll make sure, you know, if if I have my project name, make sure that isn't null for some reason. We'll say billing info equals await billing dot get billing info. And again, we'll uh, grab our name as our project name. And then what I will do is, I guess, if billing info dot data dot billing enabled. Well, then we can go ahead and disable billing. So let's see here. So our, our we'll say our result equals await billing, update billing info. And then what we're going to do here is under our parameters, we'll set our name to our project name. And then let me check our documentation here. We're going to set resource equal to billing account name equal to zero. So resource. And in here we'll have billing account name, empty string. And why is it giving me errors? No overload matches this call. Da, da. Well, I think what was interesting was it's funny, as I was typing name, it had no problem doing uh, some completion. But then when I tried to do resource, it didn't give me that. Let's see, let's look at this call here. These are the parameters, update billing info. Here's our request body. Wait, request body, not resource. Request body, huh? Maybe that's a bug in our documentation. I'm not sure. Well, there you go. But apparently going in here and just looking at what parameters could possibly be passed to update billing info, lets us figure that out pretty quickly. And then yeah, under request body, we can see some of the things we could set. Billing account name, billing enabled, name and project ID. It's funny, the documentation says, don't set billing enabled to false, set billing account name to blank. So that's what I'm gonna do. And that is probably all I need to do. So now I can uh, console log. I think we just disabled billing for our project name. And, you know, we'll uh, console log our result. Just see what that looks like. And otherwise, Looks like you already disabled billing. In which case, I'm sort of surprised this function is even running because we're running in node 10 and node 10, I believe, requires billing. So we have a function set up that is going to actually disable billing for real. Let's call it. Yikes. All right, I'm frightened. So down in here, I've got some of my like constants, my billing alert increment, projected cost to freak out about. 
I'm going to add in one more constant that is going to be, let's call it killing project amount. And this will be $10. For projects costing me more than $10, I want to kill it. And so what I will do is down, let's just do it down here. If, and so we have our spent so far amount greater than or equal to our killing project amount, then here we go. We will call disable billing for real. I'm going to make sure that we definitely send a message about this. And our message string is going to be warning. I have disabled billing for this project. Very frightening, very scary. All right. Now I'm going to run this and I should warn you, even though we are running this locally on our local host right now, we're still kind of talking to our actual production. You might've noticed we're, we're talking to our actual production app. And so if I were to call this right now, even while I'm testing it locally, it's going to go ahead and shut down that project in production for real. So for crying out loud, please be careful when you're running this and testing this. I hope as you're following along, you're testing this in an app that you don't actually care about too much because we are about to uh, pull the plug on it. I, I'm pretty sure. So let's see. We got no, got no errors. I'm going to go ahead and here we'll do something that looks pretty normal and innocuous, right? We're going to just spend 40 cents and everything's still happy. We got a nice little warning message or, you know, just like nice little not particularly concerned Slack message. Now we're going to spend 45 cents and Slack's looking a little more worried or, you know, gee, it seems to be we're suddenly spending an awful lot more per hour. I'm going to change this to $2 and 45 cents. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is bad. And now I'm going to do the thing that's going to, I think, kill my project. This thing's kind of hard to test, but here we go. We call this. It looks like it's disabled billing for the project. Let me just make sure I didn't get anything weird happening in my logs. Yeah, it looks like you can kind of see my response here. I've gotten back that my billing account name is now blank and billing enabled is false. And so in fact, if I were to call, I believe, you know, my, if I were to call my uh, get billing info function, Yeah, this would then print back some billing info where yep, billing seems to be disabled. Let me go into my app and see what's going on. So what you're going to start to see is I'm going to go into usage and billing. It usually takes about, I don't know, three or four, four or five minutes for this to start getting reflected in here. The fact that like I am now back on the free plan. Okay, but now it's about it's about one minute later. And a function that I have called that, you know, in theory is going to write in a lot of documents to uh, my database is suddenly running into resource exhausted errors, quota exceeded, right? And so it's been, it's failed to write these documents in my database. And, you know, you'll start to see probably more of that. Let's see now my usage and billing. Okay. Suddenly I am now getting some errors with my cloud storage where it's saying, hey, you know what? You've used up all your quota. You know, please upgrade to make sure there's no service disruption. Things are going to start to look kind of weird and bad as I start to kind of get into, there we go, Cloud Firestore writes. That's probably what it meant is Cloud Firestore. You know, again, running into sort of all these errors saying your quota has been used up. You're no longer able to write to your database. My project is now listed as being in the Spark plan, which is free. And, you know, more and more of my cloud functions are going to fail because, you know, I've sort of removed billing and these things are gradually failing. So yeah, you can basically see I've killed my app. I have killed the usage to it. I'm no longer going to be able to go over the free quota. You know, the flip side is I guess now at this point, I'm probably no longer spending any money within this app. Now, if I want to go ahead and enable it again, I can, you know, click upgrade and I, you know, would select the blaze pay as you go plan. In fact, I guess let me just do that. 
I'm going to, you know, continue on my billing account as before. I'll set up a budget alert of $33. And, you know, gradually things will start to look good again, hopefully fairly soon. You know, it sometimes can take a little while, but actually, no, it looks like it's, it's starting to go back up again and, you know, billing has become enabled and things are starting to get happier and happier again. You will notice if I go into my billing section under budgets and alerts, I think it creates, it has created a second, it's created a second budget for this project. I think I now basically have sort of two budgets set up, both pointing to the same project. You know, I might want to look at, you know, eliminating one of these. I kind of assume this old one is still going to be working, even though I kind of disabled and re-enabled the billing project. But, you know, like, a couple weird things like this will happen. This is, like I said, not a thing you want to kind of be doing normally. It's the equivalent of kind of pulling the cord out of the wall while your, you know, game console is showing the like, wait, auto saving your game function. So uh, yeah, be careful around doing this. This really should be kind of used in case of emergencies. Don't do this as like my, I'm going to do this every day to make sure I don't go over my, you know, spending limit or something. No, this is like, again, use for emergencies. You know, you're breaking the glass, you're you're pulling the fire alarm, that sort of thing. Whew. So we did it. Um, I know this one was kind of a long video, but we did what we what we wanted to do from the beginning, which is we set up that kill switch that is gonna go in and it's gonna kill our project if our budget costs really kind of if our pricing really seems out of control. Um, I think I've given you enough warnings now that I don't need to give you yet another warning around, you know, be careful around using this. Uh, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. But you know, for those of you maybe building a weekend hackathon project and you're just really worried, you know, because there really shouldn't be any usage on this, maybe this is something you could look into. Uh, so with that, thanks for tagging along with me on this Firebase semi-live series. Um, is there more you want to see me do? I'm always, you know, open for sort of new ideas, new topics. Um, you can watch me flail around in TypeScript some more. That hasn't been painful enough for those of you that are, you know, actual TypeScript developers. So. Thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you soon on another episode sometime in the future of Firebase Semi-Life. Bye, everyone.